Hello, hello, hello. I'm Janessa Prudhomme, wife, mom, Jesus lover, and your podcast host. You're listening to the hashtag Create Your Earth Life podcast. This podcast has converted with me from new age to Christian, and the goal here is to help you grow in your faith through Bible studies, testimonies, and real life experiences. So ex-New Agers, newborn Christians, mamas, entrepreneurs, and those who want to grow in their faith, you have come to the right podcast. Say a prayer, grab your drink of choice, and let's get growing. Hi guys, welcome back to the hashtag Create Your Earth Life podcast YouTube channel. Today we are going to be starting a Bible study. So I am starting this Bible study at the beginning of the year. It is January now because I believe this is when people have goals and sometimes people have goals to become more spiritual, to get closer to God. I really want to help people with understanding the gospel because the gospel completely changed my life. It completely cleaned up my life and it gave me a whole new life. Jesus gave me a whole new life. But then I started reading the gospel and with Jesus and the gospel, getting to know him, it's just been an amazing journey. So I want to share what I've learned with you guys and I want to help you through understanding the gospel and reading the gospel and help you become spiritually stronger and have a stronger faith. And if you guys don't know my testimony, I will share with you briefly what it is. August 2020, I was saved by Jesus from the new age. My cousin who was raised Christian, went to Christian schools, everything was Christian for her. And then some bad stuff happened in her life and she decided she didn't believe in God anymore. She started doing witchcraft, uh, smoking marijuana, drinking alcohol, partying a lot. And then God came to her and basically was like, don't you remember all the stuff I did for you? And when she shared her testimony and she shared how tarot cards, crystals, um, certain kind of meditations, these things were demonic. It hit me in the heart. She talks about looking at Jesus and reading the Bible and what the Bible says about those things and what we should be doing. That was the moment where I stopped using tarot cards. I stopped using crystals. I stopped using runes. I went on Amazon and bought myself a Bible. And then I started praying every day and reading the Bible and my life completely changed. I was able to forgive people Um, I started to have a softer heart during the time when I got saved. I had a very hard heart. I had just gotten out of a relationship not too long ago and I was very upset, did not believe in love anymore. And I was like, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna date anymore. I only believe in love between a child and their parents. And within one week of getting saved, Jesus softened my heart and I met my husband. So it's been a crazy and amazing roller coaster. Jesus has just completely and totally changed my life. So I want to help you guys get to know him by reading the gospel with you. We're going to start in Matthew and then go from there. In the gospel, this is not the first time Jesus is presented. So it's the first time that we talk about Jesus, how he was, you know, how he was conceived, where he was birthed, who his parents were, his earth parents, what he did throughout his 33 years of life, about 33 years. Um, This is not the first time that Jesus is mentioned in the Bible. Jesus was actually mentioned in the very first words of the Bible. So Genesis is the first book of the Bible and it was written in Hebrew when it was first written. The first words in Genesis, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning. And in Hebrew that is Bir she. And in Hebrew also they write from right to left in symbols. And when you break down those symbols, there is a meaning behind them. And the meaning is In the beginning, in Hebrews, means the Son of God crowned with thorns upon his head on a tree, a gift of the covenant. So to think that Genesis was written many moons before Jesus came to earth, and to think also that God had this plan from the very beginning. Jesus was always a part of the plan. And then also Genesis 1.26, then God said, let us, 
make mankind in our image, in our likeness, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So when he's saying, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, God is saying him and Jesus. That is the belief behind it. That um, when he says our or us, that it's not just him. He's including Jesus as well. And then another time that Jesus is mentioned in the Old Testament um, Zechariah 12 10 about 500 years before Jesus's resurrection it says then I will pour out a spirit of grace and prayer on the house of David and the residents of Jerusalem and they will look at me whom they pierce they will mourn for him as one mourns for an old for an only child they weep bitterly for him as one weeps for a firstborn so again, it is thought that they are talking about Jesus and the resurrection because if you know anything about his resurrection, they pierced him in the side to make sure he was dead. And this piercing went up to his heart and then basically it's thought that he had a heart attack because water came out from that area. There are many other prophecies that have been fulfilled in the Old Testament that speak about Jesus and speak about times that are happening nowadays. So getting to the Bible study, I want to show you the sources that I will be using for this Bible study. So number one, I'm going to be using this big old book. It is the Lifeway Women's Bible Christian Standard Bible. And I think I've decided I'm going to read out of this Bible because it is very simple to read. I was going to ring, read out of the New King's James Version, which a lot of people read that one, but it can be very complicated. And if you are a new Christian, I want you to completely and totally understand what I'm reading. But I also would suggest that you read on your own and let the Holy Spirit guide you that don't listen to everything I say. I have a lot of information and I've done a lot of studying and I'm super excited to share this stuff with you guys. But the Holy Spirit is the one who is going to speak to you and change your heart. Um, this is just to help guide you. So I'm going to use the most simplest version of the Bible. So we have a full understanding while we are here on YouTube. And this Bible also includes different notes and stuff that I'll read to you guys. I will also be using the cultural backgrounds study Bible. This is an NIV Bible. Um, new international version, but I'm not going to be reading out of this other than to get notes about the cultural background, which is super fascinating and paints a wonderful picture of what was going on during that time of Jesus being here. What was the culture like and all that good stuff that's very fascinating. And then I have my own personal Bible, which is the New King James Version um, that I will probably look in occasionally because I write notes all through my Bible. And then also, of course, sources from online. I'll be using the internet too to look up some things. And I'm gonna put everything in the bio down below. So if I tell you something and you're like, how does she know that? Or where'd she get that from? It's going to be in the bio. You just check down there, click on the link or see the book that I used. You will know where to get that information or where I got that information. But the way Bible study is going to go on here is that we are going to pray first. Prayer is so important when you're doing a Bible study because you want Jesus to be the one who leads you and guides you and speaks to you. So every single time I do a Bible study, I do a quick prayer. It doesn't have to be long, but I do a quick prayer and I just say, Jesus, I'm going to sit down and read the Bible right now. Lord, please guide me. Please help me understand the Bible the way you want me to understand the Bible. And Lord, please speak to me throughout the Bible. Then we are going to read the passage. We're going to read the chapter, read whatever we're reading. We're going to read it. And then we are going to break it down. And I have tons of notes. Um, I'm going to have tons of notes for each chapter so we can break it down and have an understanding of what's going on, what we read, cultural background, and all that information. 
let's get started. We're starting in Matthew and I'm going to give you a little introduction about Matthew right now. It was thought that Matthew was the writer of Matthew, but they're not 100% sure he was the writer. He also had a previous name. So Matthew's name wasn't always Matthew. It, it used to be Levi, which I thought was super fascinating because I did not know that. But a lot of people who encounter God during that time, encounter Jesus, they would have a change of name. So think about if you've read the gospel already and read past it, or if you've just heard stories um, about the Bible, a lot of people know who Paul is. His name used to be Saul and he was a killer and he was a really bad guy and he hated Christians. And then God got to his heart and changed him and made him a Christian, a lover of Jesus. He loved Jesus and he shared the gospel all the time. Jesus changed his name from Saul to Paul. So this is the same with a lot of people back then. It's not documented throughout the Bible that all people's names changed, but Matthew's name was Levi at one point. At least that is what is thought. Um, and the reasoning because of that is in the scriptures in Luke and Mark, it says Levi, the son of Alphaeus. And when you put everything together, it all matches up to show that Levi and Matthew are the same person. Levi meant joined and Matthew meant gift of Yahweh, which if you don't know who Yahweh is, it's God. And then also it is believed that Matthew could have been his Greek name and Levi his Hebrew name. So there are some things that we're not 100% sure about. Matthew was a Greek speaking Jewish Christian and it's believed he wrote his gospel for a urban location because he wrote in Greek, not Aramaic. Aramaic, I hope I'm saying that right. The Greek language dominated in Syria's urban centers. Specifically, it was thought he wrote for Antioch in Syria. And I hope I'm saying that right. Antioch, Antioch, A-N-T-I-O-C-H. Book of Matthew was written between AD 50 and 90. They're thinking the 70s. Some scholars believe Matthew was the first gospel written and some believe Mark was the first gospel written. The last thing you need to know about Matthew not just the gospel, but the person himself, Matthew, was that he was a tax collector and he was hated by Jews before he was saved by Jesus. And the reason he was hated by Jews is because he worked for the Romans. He collected taxes and he wasn't getting paid by the Romans. The Romans wouldn't pay the Jews back then. They expected that if you were a tax collector, you would take extra from the Jews, your own people, and then save it for yourself to make a living. And Romans back then were the ones who ruled over the Jews and they did not believe in the one true God. They had their own fake gods that they worshiped and spoke to. So we're getting close to diving into Matthew 1. I just want to mention that Matthew 1 starts with genealogy. And to be completely and totally honest with you guys, when I first started reading the Bible, I was like, this is boring and I'm not reading this. And I would skip over the genealogy. And the genealogy basically is just people's names. But the genealogy is actually very important. And so I want to explain why it's important. One, if you have read the Old Testament or you plan on reading it, you're going to realize that all these names are in the Old Testament. You're going to learn about these people in the Old Testament, and you're going to see these people are just like us. They glorify God through all their mistakes. They're not perfect people. They have tons of imperfections. They have done some horrific things, and they still are people who loved God and God loved them. So they are people just like us, but they are written in the Bible and they're an important um, piece of history and, and they're important in the Bible. And then also this is another reason why the genealogy is very important. This is in the Lifeway Women's Bible. Angie Smith wrote, Matthew reminds Jewish readers of the two main covenants God made with his people. He told David a king would sit on his throne forever. So God told David a king would sit on his throne forever. And he told Abraham that all the families of the earth would be blessed through him. Matthew starts out with a bang. He knows that these names will perk their ears up for the rest of his message. Over and over throughout his book, Matthew emphasizes that Jesus is the king and that he came to fulfill what the prophets had predicted about the Messiah, David's descendants. So this is another reason why 
the genealogy is important. So bear with me as I read through the genealogy and then we get to a little bit more information about how Jesus was conceived and how we got his name and whatnot. But first, let's start with some prayer. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, thank you so much for blessing us with YouTube so we can share the gospel to many people at one time and that we're able to join together at different times and able to read your word and get an understanding of who you were and what you want from us. And Lord, as we dive into Matthew 1 today, please, Lord, guide us. Please help me read the Bible and share the Bible with people watching. And please help the people watching to understand the Bible the way you want them to understand it. And Lord, please touch people's hearts today. Please touch people's minds today and help them want to get closer to you. And Lord, please just speak to us. In your name I pray. Amen. All right, guys, let's get started. The genealogy of Jesus Christ. An account of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. From Abraham to David. Abraham fathered Isaac. Isaac fathered Jacob. Jacob fathered Judah and his brothers. Judah fathered Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez fathered Hezron. Hezron fathered Aram. Aram fathered Anan Amminadad. Amminadab fathered Nashon. Nashon fathered Solomon. Solomon fathered Boaz by Rahab. Boaz fathered Obed by Ruth. Obed fathered Jesse, and Jesse fathered King David. From David to Babylonian exile, David fathered Solomon by Uriah's wife. Solomon fathered Rehoboam. Rehoboam fathered Abahash. Abajah fathered Asa, Asa fathered Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat fathered Joram, Joram fathered Uziah, Uziah fathered Jotham, Jotham fathered Ahaz, Ahaz fathered Hezekiah, Hezekiah fathered Manasseh, Manasseh fathered Ammon, Ammon fathered Josiah, and Josiah fathered Jeconia and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon. From the exile to the Messiah, after the exile to Babylon, Jeconia fathered Shiltiel, Shiltiel fathered Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel fathered Abiud, Abiud fathered Eliakim, Eliakim fathered Azor, Azor fathered Zadok, Zadok fathered Achim, Achim fathered Eliud, Eliud fathered Eleazar, Eleazar fathered Mathan, Mathan, Mathan fathered Jacob, and Jacob fathered Joseph, the husband of Mary, who gave birth to Jesus, who was called the Messiah. So all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations, and from David until the exile to Babylon, 14 generations, and from the exile to Babylon until the Messiah, 14 generations. The Nativity of the Messiah. The birth of Jesus Christ came about this way. After his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, it was discovered before they came together that she was pregnant from the Holy Spirit. So her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her publicly, decided to divorce her secretly. But after he had considered these things, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what has been conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins." Now all this took place to fulfill what's spoken by the Lord through the prophet. See, the virgin will become a pregnant, will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which is translated, God is with us. When Joseph spoke up, he did as the Lord's angel had commanded him. He married her, but did not have sexual relations with her until she gave birth to a son, and he named him Jesus. So that is Matthew 1 that we just read, and now we are going to break it down. But what's interesting about the times then is that when people went through puberty, nowadays we'd say teenagers or children go through puberty, back then you were considered an adult. So you were ready to get married at puberty. So a lot of the times the Jewish people, uh, once a woman hit puberty, she, Mary was about 14 years old, the 
person she was going to marry was usually around that age or a few years older. So it's thought that Joseph was a couple years older. And then they become betrothed, which nowadays is like engagement, but to get out of betrothed, you have to get divorced. So it's not complete marriage. It's also not an something you can easily get out of. And that lasts for about one year. During that time, they are not allowed to be together alone. The husband has to work because they wanna have a financially stable marriage. After a year goes by, they will get married. And then that night they will have sex. They have to show everyone their sheet to prove that she was a virgin. And so there was a lot of things happening here. They didn't actually have sex on their first night of marriage. It says they did not have sex until Jesus was born. So they were not able to prove that she was a virgin. And they were also going to have to deal with people probably gossiping and saying, well, she's probably not a virgin because she's pregnant. And then the fact that he's marrying her and he's okay with this you know he he's going to probably get a lot of backlash at that time for not marrying a, someone who they believe is not a virgin but they didn't care they cared about what god had to say and the fact that an angel came to joseph and said you don't need to be afraid you can take her as your wife like she's been faithful she's carrying a gift from the holy spirit so that's pretty cool. You can see what kind of guy that Joseph is. And also on top of that, he could have divorced her secretly. It says he wanted to divorce her secretly, which is a big deal because back then, if you didn't do it secretly, you would get all your money that you put into the marriage back. And then you would also get your money um, that you gave to the husband. So it was part of their kind of traditions to give money to the father of the wife who get your money back. So he could have tried to publicly divorce her and get the money back that he's put into the marriage and get the money back that he used um, to give her father. But he said, no, I want to do it secretly, which means there would be two to three witnesses and he wouldn't get any of his money back. She would just get a divorce certificate and then she'd be able to marry again um, if she would like to during that time. So you can see what kind of guy Joseph was. He seemed to be a kind guy. He didn't want her to feel shamed um, because of this. But then he changes his mind because God comes to him. Uh, an angel comes to him from God and says, you know, don't worry about it. Everything's going to be fine. Like it's a gift from the Holy Spirit you don't have to worry, she hasn't been unfaithful. So it's pretty clear that God wanted Mary to be a virgin when she got pregnant and a virgin when she gave birth. This chapter also shows a prophecy being fulfilled. So it shares how in Isaiah 7, 14, which is in the Old Testament, it says, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel and Isaiah was written about 700 years before. So this prophecy was fulfilled 700 years later. The last thing I'd like to mention in this Bible study is a word study about Emmanuel, the word Emmanuel, the name Emmanuel in the Lifeway Women's Bible Study book. Emmanuel is a Hebrew masculine name consisting of two Hebrew words, El meaning God and Emmanu meaning with us. As a proper name, it appears only twice in the Old Testament and once in the New, where it is specifically associated with Jesus. The name Emmanuel gives expression to the truth God had communicated in various ways to his covenant people throughout history. God is truly with his people. He is God with us. In the Old Testament, the name was given to a child born in the time of King Ahaz as a sign to the king that the nation would receive relief from enemy attack. The name demonstrated that God was with his people in the deliverance. But even greater and more wonderful than this, the sign predicted the birth of the incarnate God, Jesus the Messiah, God with us in the flesh, the one who would die for sin and deliver us from the ultimate enemy. Jesus, Emmanuel, would enable people to draw near and experience God's presence in an intimate way. That is the end of Matthew 1 Bible study. The next Bible study is going to be on Matthew 2 and 3 and that video should be a lot shorter than this one. I want to do an introduction and share with you a little bit of my testimony and why I wanted to share the gospel with you guys and how we were going to go about it but we're going to dive right in next week probably right at the beginning of the video 
and I hope you guys enjoy. If you feel like God is speaking to you through this video, through this Bible study, if you feel this is helpful for you, then this may be helpful for your friends or your family or if you have a following, anything like that. So please share this video with others so they can study along with us. All right, guys, I hope you have the best day ever. Let's end in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for this time together. Thank you for this Bible study. I hope that the word spoke to the ones listening. I hope that their hearts and minds were pierced by you and that they feel the love that you give us every single day. Um, and I am just so grateful for this opportunity. In your name, Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Bye, guys. Wait, I have something for you. If you are a new believer, a parent, someone who wants to start a business or ministry online, or someone who loves faith-based jewelry, stick around. For new believers, I have a prayer journal for you. It is called Bearing Fruit Prayer Journal. This prayer journal includes Bible verses about spiritual warfare and emphasizes the importance of prayer. There are three main focuses for this prayer journal. The first one is gratitude and how you can express it. The second one is forgiveness and how it is important to God, ourselves, and others. And the third focus is serving others. There are also two bonus ideas that will help you grow in your faith. The reason I wrote this Bearing Fruits Prayer Journal is because these are the topics that Jesus had me focusing on when he first saved me. I think they're super important. Serving others is super important. Forgiving others is super important. And being grateful is super important. And if you are having difficulty with submitting yourself to Jesus and following these things, because some of these things are very difficult, forgiving people who have hurt you really badly can be really difficult, then I suggest that you get this Bearing Fruits Prayer Journal. It's free, completely free to you, and it will help you through some of your struggles or just help you have a stronger prayer life. For parents and people who are raising children, I also have a freebie for you, and that is the Planting Seeds 10 Ways to Teach Your Children About God Guide. And this also includes a game. A few ideas that are mentioned in this guide are children's Bible podcasts that you can listen to in the car or anywhere else, children's Christian shows, a bedtime book that you can read to your children at night where you can share and talk about God and it has prayers and verses and different topics in it. And of course, as I mentioned already, there is a game that you can play at dinner. The game includes a bunch of questions and you pull the questions out of a jar and then you read the question to your child and then you discuss the question and help them answer it and find answers about God. And all the answers are included with the guide. My family and I have really enjoyed this game together. For people who want to start a business or ministry online, I have a faith-based entrepreneur entrepreneurship ebook. This book has three years of information inside of it. I have been on the online space for about three years. I have a podcast. I have a blog. I have this YouTube channel. I have been on social media. I have done endless amounts of research on how to be successful online. And I have documented all this information and I've put it into a book. So if you are deciding you want to start on the online world, you want to have a ministry, you want to have a business, you don't know where to start or it's just too overwhelming, all the information, I have put it all in one book. And I am selling this book for $10. It is a steal. It is a great price. It has a ton of information and I have continuously updated it. So it was currently updated for 2023 there is information about podcasting about youtubing about social media about blogging information about starting a email list information on how to monetize online there is everything in here that you need to know and at the very end there is a business strategy plan so i'm going to help you have a business plan before you get started so you know where you want to be on the online space what you need to be doing and the best way you're going to be able to make money and grow an audience over time if you are feeling god 
call you to the online space, then I would do it now. There are 5 billion people who use the internet. People every year are buying more and more online. And of course, the newer generations are all about technology. They are using the internet. That is what everyone's doing. So if you feel God calling you, I absolutely would buy this ebook. It is a great price, $10 very affordable, gives you all the information that you need to get started on the online space. The last thing I wanna share with you guys is Gravy Shop. Gravy Shop is a faith-based jewelry shop online and they have adorable jewelry, great quality, and I can get you a discount if you use my name, Janasa, J-E-N-A-S-A, you can get 15% off your purchase. And the wonderful thing about Gravies is that most of their jewelry is under $30. It is fabulous quality. I've been wearing my king ring. As you can see, this is my king ring. I wear it every single day. I've been wearing it for months. The king ring is a great reminder that Jesus is king. Every time I look down at it, it's a reminder that we need to keep our mind on heaven and be thinking about Jesus and the afterlife in heaven with him. I also occasionally wear my galaxy necklace, which is made out of moonstone and I think it's super adorable. Every piece of jewelry you purchase, you will also receive a verse with it. Gravies has many different options. They have earrings, adjustable rings, bracelets, reversible necklaces, which means you get two for the price of one. Gravies has pieces that are handmade in Israel. They have pieces that are made with Roman glass and they have pieces with fragments of glass discovered during archeological excavation in the Holy Land. I would highly suggest you check out Gravies. They have super cute jewelry, very affordable, and they have sales all the time. Use the code Janasa, J-E-N-A-S-A, for 15% off. And you can locate Gravies Jewelry at gravies.shop. G-R-A-V-I-E-S dot shop. If you are interested in the Bearing Fruit Prayer Journal, the Planting Seeds, 10 Ways to Teach Your Children About God, the Faith-Based Entrepreneurship eBook, or Gravy's Jewelry, check out the show notes. All the links are down there. And I hope you guys have the best day ever. God bless you all.